Hello and welcome to week 4 unit 3 data access control. My name is Babu and I shall be your instructor for this unit. It is often a requirement for companies that the business user should have read or write access to only a set of data based on a certain context. SAP objects, SAP business objects are mostly built in a way that, are, that the access to them can be controlled. In this unit, we are going to talk about how the access to the data of custom business object can be restricted for business users. Access rights in business by design solution are based on work center and work center views. Each work center view is assigned an access context, which is used to control the access of data. For example, the purchase order view has an access context of company. This means that the access to purchase orders can be controlled based on company. So, you can put, you can set up the system such that if the user A is allowed to access the purchase orders of company C1, then he or she should not be able to access the purchase order of company C2. This is also known as instance based access. To bring in this access control, the SAP objects are integrated to an object called access control list, in short ACL. This object stores, for example, for every purchase order instance, the company UID. The user is allowed to access a purchase order only if the access rights of the company in ACL is given to him or her. During the query on purchase order, the ACL is checked and the result is returned accordingly. There are multiple access context available in business by design such as company, site, employee, sales, marketing, etc. The same feature is very much required for the custom business objects such that the instance based access control can be provided based on the predefined set of access contexts. Cloud application studio has the provision for the same. To define the access context, first you should know what is the basis for controlling the access to the data that is the access context is it company, employee, site or something else. Once you know that there are two ways to implement access control in custom business object. One way is to inherit access control from an SAP business object. In this case you must find an SAP business object which has the access context that you want to use. For example, if you want access control based on company you can choose the business object company financials process control. You can find the access context assigned to the SAP business objects in the repository view which I showed you in the last unit. Search for the business object and the right hand side you can see the access context for the business object. To achieve this you must first define an, as an association in your custom business object with the annotation relevant for access control such that you link your business custom business object to the SAP business object and get the authorizations. Few things to note here, for each business object you can only use one association that is relevant for access control. Secondly, the source node of the association must be the root node. And third, the target node of the association must be the root node of the target business object that is the controlling business object. The target business object must have an association that is relevant for access control. Okay. The other way, the second way to integrate the ACL is to integrate the custom business object within the BO itself. Here you must define an element in the business object which will store the access control data and pass it to the ACL. This approach is very simple and not much of coding is required. The element should be annotated with access context, access control context and within brackets you should provide the access context. The type of the element should be UUID. The data of this element is passed to the ACL node and this way the ACL will return the instances accordingly. Please note the few things about these approaches. A business object can use only one of the above annotations once. Secondly, 
In the second approach, you can integrate the BO to ACL. As of now, only the access context employee is supported for business by design. If you want to use other another access context, you should go for approach 1. The steps are nearly the same, just a bit of scripting is required to manage the data. Okay, let us move to the demo and see how this works. Coming to our user story of internal job search, a manager should be allowed to see only those job applications where he or she is the hiring manager. So, the business object job applications needs controlled access and the access is based on the employee which is the hiring manager. Hence, the access context here is employee. We will achieve this use case with the second approach mentioned earlier. That is, we will integrate the ACL to the custom business object. So, let us get started. This is the add-on which we are using and now we will open the job application and my element hiring manager UUID, I will annotate it with access control context so that I can integrate this integrate this custom BO to the ACL using my hiring manager UUID as a access control parameter. So, I mention access control context and then brackets it is of type employee and close the bracket. So, with this let me format the things and yeah. So, a small annotation is required and then we activate the business object. So, once the business object is activated we will then go to the work center views and the OWL where we will put the restrictions to control the data. So, we go to the work center view first and mention that this work center view should be associated with the access context employee. So, we will go to the properties and you can see access context code is none right now. So, it is unrestricted access and I will just say I want to control the access based on the employee which is 1010 code. Okay. So, once I have specified this, I can activate. Okay, yeah, and then let's go to the OWL now, where we see the real data that comes up on the UI. And here, I would like to say that I want to see the data in a restricted mode based on the authorization. So, once the UI, okay, so we are here, and this is the OWL for job applications and same again we will go to RBM data section. So, we can see access control business object and click on this you can see job applications has uh, unrestricted access which is set in the system. So, it means every all the data is accessible. So, we remove that flag which means now it is restricted and the same thing we can do for the QAF and the OIF screens of job applications so that the data is accessed or changed accordingly. So, now let us ok. So, we have done that for OWL and we are now ready for test. I will not do it for QAF and OIF. Let us go into the system now and see ok. So, now I will just go there are two ok. As you can see now there are two employees I have created with role hiring manager, hiring manager and hiring manager 2. So, I will just show you the access restrictions of hiring manager. You can see for the job applications view for this the access context is set to employee and the read access is restricted as well as the write access is restricted and restricted to what you can see below. So, it is restricted to that this hiring manager user ID should be able to see the job applications which are where the hiring manager is Michael Warner as you can see it is set for Michael Warner only. <coughs> Similarly, for the other user hiring manager 2 the access restriction restrictions are set to the employee Kelvin Stokes. So, Kelvin Stokes wherever he is the hiring manager basically that is the only applications he should see. So, now let us go and create a job and we will see how it works. So, we will create a job and we will create two jobs basically one for the hiring manager Michael and other for the hiring manager Kelvin. 
So, let us first create the first job here and okay, give it a title development this is in English. Okay, let me specify the work area something okay, now system is okay. So, so I say development and then the employment type I will put it part time hiring manager as you as I said we will use the first hiring manager here and which is Michael Warner. So, I will just enter. So, Michael Warner is the hiring manager for this job. Okay, let me enter the other data and publish the job. So, I have saved the job and once it is saved I can see the hiring manager again confirm Michael Warner it is published. So, uh, it is published and approval was not necessary here. So, it is published directly. Okay, so, now we have created one job for Michael Warner let us create another job for Kelvin Stoke. So, let me repeat the steps here. part time my hiring manager I will mention Kelvin Stoke who is E3344 in the system. Then the country last date of application and I will just save and publish. So, this job is also published once the job is published then it is available for the candidates to apply. Okay, so, close it and we log off and we will log in as one of the candidate in the system and apply for both the jobs which will create two job applications basically. So, let me log in as a candidate ok. So, uh, oops something wrong let me correct it is candidate 1 welcome ok. So, as soon as we log in now we will see the job listings for this candidate in the job listing view you can see there will be two jobs that we just now published and for two different managers hiring managers let uh, let us apply one by one for both the jobs applied successfully for the second one applied successfully. Now, what we should do is we should see login as the hiring manager Michael and see what does what applications is the Michael sees and what the application does Calvin Stokes sees. So, let us log off ok and let me log in as Michael Warner which is basically hiring manager user the user id is hiring manager here. Okay. Here we go and let us go into the job applications view now and you can see there were two job applications created, but this manager can only see one which belongs to himself and this was applied by James Smith who was the candidate. You cannot see both the applications here. Now, let us log off from the system and log in again with the other hiring manager which is hiring manager 2. Okay. So, let us see the job applications for the another manager and I would expect only one application and here we go. So, the hiring manager Kelvin has only one application from Jim Smith. So, this is how basically we are controlling the access of the data based on the hiring manager. Okay. So, with this we have reached the end of this unit let us have a quick recap of what we have showcased in this unit. Overview of access rights and access controls in business by design, how business by design controls the access of the data. We learnt different ways of achieving the access control on custom business object. We then integrated the ACL with custom BO for access control as an example as a part of demonstration. So, please try the exercise for this unit for hands on experience and thank you and see you in the next unit have a great day. Bye-bye.